get the faith that was once delivered to the saints. So now we can call people, we can look for opportunities yes, sir. to go to, to glorify the Father. Any of y'all ever do that? Look for opportunities. I've seen times I can get up. I'm so in God, I'm looking for arms. Lord, teach, show me somebody that I'm blessed today. Or that can be a blessing to her. Or that can have some kind of covenant relationship with her. And then here comes God, this bad self. Don't, don't bring up a, a, a vagrant person, a homeless person. And if can spare, get some spare change, man, I just prayed that prayer right this morning. So here I am. Oh, yeah, I can help you out. And thought I was giving a dollar, and that's right, it's the 20. Oh, yeah. I'm looking like, man, can I get some change back? I mean, really? I didn't mean to give you a whole 20. Lord, so let it go, let it go. Let it go. Man, Lord, what in the world are you doing? So when we talk about faith, we're talking about the catalyst. People of God, that's going to get us to that next junction. If you don't believe you're going to get there, you're already defeated. Right. Right. You're already defeated. Watch this. I'm almost closing, y'all. I'm, I'm almost. Hebrews um, 13 and 20. Oh, I love faith. I think that I can just tell y'all the miracles that we've seen. God is good. You got to listen. I, I, by the mercies of God, I pray, this is my prayer, that even as the, the rest of this week play out, that God put each one of us in a situation where it looks impossible. But I pray that you hear my voice coming through this microphone, that you step out the boat and say, God, Whether it's somebody at a rest, bus stop or whatever that, that, that need healing, whether it's somebody, amen, that need a touch from God, but you don't stay in that comfort zone, amen, that sometimes we can get comfortable in. Amen, I, I've been there. Amen, I, my sheep shall know my voice and a stranger they shall not fall, right? So now when God speaks, I'm moving, I'm turning over chairs trying to get there. I may not even understand it all at that time, yes. but when I'm on there, direction comes. Trust me. We went through some time where my wife probably thought I was crazy. I remember one time, Bishop, I said, um, maybe I gotta go to the hospital. She said, what's wrong with you? I said, nothing wrong. I just heard the Holy Spirit say, go to the hospital. What fool gonna do that? So I put on, I never it's late at night. I got up, put on the clothes every day, forget it. I'm, I'm going, all the hospital I know is close to White Memphis, and I'm going there. But when I got there, Bishop Davis, I was, I was cried out. Somebody said, yeah, weak enough. Because I knew I heard God's voice. I'm going to a hospital to do what? Why? What is really going on? But when I tell y'all, the more I cried, the more God came. The more I yield it, the more he stepped in. So when I got to the hospital, I heard it so clear. What elevators? What halls? Where to go? Until he put me right in front of a lady and said, that's the one. I kid y'all not. And I told the lady, now I'm standing there, told the lady, why? Well, I'm just here. The lady said, we need all the prayer we can get. My husband just had a heart attack and a stroke. So I wanted to go see him, but I couldn't go see him because they was the nurse shifts were changing or something like that, or you can't go see. It was kind of like a nurse change or something. I'm like, boy, you got me. What's it? No, I said, go downstairs in the lobby and pray. It's about 10, 11 o'clock that night. I'm the only one down in that lobby praying, rocking. The Lord said, now go home. I go home. Get up the next morning. Hey, no clue. I'm going to have to go back. God said, now go back. So when I went back, I asked my wife, do you want to go to the hospital? Because I told her what happened that night. She said, yeah, I'll go. So now God get a witness. That's it. Woo! That's it. God said, a witness, we go. No, he 
pictures that all go right to the man's room, and guess what? His whole family had gathered in the room at that time. Mm -hmm. And God had us praying over him. He was an older gentleman. But he began to say how he had church hurt from church people. And as, as I ministered to him about church hurt, he began to get free right there on that table. I mean, on that table. that are led by the Spirit of God on the sons of God. Walking by faith and not by sight, we got to practice that. Amen. Not just when we're in a position to practice it. Even with the, because you know what? Can I be transparent with y'all? What got me on this faith thing is, I remember something happened to my phone. And I knew my insurance was out. Phone expensive. Now I'm going to pay to go get another whole phone eight days. I'm all going through all this. I'm going to put myself through. I torment myself about a phone. <laughs> Got over to the garage place. And the lady said, oh yeah, y'all are good customers. Let me just get you a free phone. <laughs> Wait a minute. I don't torture my own self. <laughs> you know what I begin to do? I begin to step back. And say, okay, God, let me take myself out of those equations. Y'all, somebody see that now. See what I'm saying? Amen. And I get to take myself out of those situations. I begin to see God step in and do stuff. Can y'all hear that? Any questions? Y'all talk to me. I'm about to get in my notes here. So when we're talking about faith, we're talking about the, how can I put it? We're talking about the, the, the sustainable glory that God will sustain. It's so easy to have faith when there's nothing going on. What about when you lose that job? What about when you need money for those bills and you don't have the money? Because this is what I learned. I'm going to really, really shut this mic down because I'm about to. What I'm learning, Bishop Davis, is when we take care of this business, yes, sir. Yes, sir. good God, I felt that. He's going to take care of the house. We may be in a dilemma, but he's going to take care of it. He's going to take care of it. So now my focus is, God, what do you need me to do? My prayer in the morning, God, what am I supposed to do today? Because I understand now, if I take care of what he wants me to do, he will take care of my needs as well. He will take care of them. So when we operate in faith, you got to lose yourself. You just lose yourself. I'm saying it like it's easy, it's not easy. I get that. But it's doable. It's doable. Because faith puts us in another bracket with God where God can trust us. Watch this with what's on me. He desires truth where on the inward parts. Look at any of us perfect. Just be honest with him. Lord, I'm still jacked up from the floor. I need help. They still hurt. They, they doing all this stuff to me. You know, he said, pray for your enemies, do good to those that are You got to practice that. Don't dislike them because they don't like you. No, we're different. Let me show you what real love is. When I came to church, the brother was loving me. I ain't nothing about God and that kind of God they love. They love me, I'm pushing them off. What, kind of, what in the world going on? Now, biggest hug in the world, let me give a hug, brother, especially my brother. I'm hugging sisters like that now. Amen, somebody. Amen. It's the love of God. Because when you love, you can't love God and then don't love his people. Those go together. Is that all right? So as I close, I want to say, anything that you're going through, you step out of it. You get out of that <laughs> and I really allow God to get in. The minute you, you want to know when God get in because you're going to stop worrying about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because if you still worry about it, you ain't let God 
for them to live. Ooh. And the minute that you let God get in and rest assured, He's going to make it all right. That's the kind of God we serve. And that's the covenant that we have with Him. That He won't leave us nor forsake us. Even when He's silent. Because when He's silent, He's still speaking. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. When, when, when God is uh, uh, verbally solid, you might have to look at pictures on the wall. You might have to look at apples and oranges and see what kind of spots they get. You might have to look at stuff and see what God is really saying. I know I'm pushing you a little bit right there. But he might speak to any, any way. That's what I'm saying. You might get a stranger come right by your way and say, look, blah, 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 blah. Whoa. That might be exactly what you need to hear. That was a total stranger. Amen. I'm done, God. That's, that, if y'all have any questions, I am. Because when we talk about faith, it's a system of advantage. We have the advantage. 